Atropine is an anticholinergic agent which is commonly used in the emergency department for the treatment of bradycardia and organophosphate poisoning, but it may also be used as an adjunct during rapid sequence intubation in the pretreatment phase, especially in the pediatric population. Although the use of atropine in pretreatment during RSI has fallen drastically over the years, some experts still recommend that you consider its use in selected pediatric populations. This is in contrast to the adult population, where atropine is rarely used during RSI, except for the unrelated and independent cases of bradycardia that occur peri-intubation. In fact, the entire pretreatment phase is less common in adults when compared to the pediatric population. Generally, there are three clinical scenarios where the use of atropine can be considered. The first is in infants younger than one year of age. This population has a predilection for vaguely induced bradycardia. Some observational studies and small trials in infants, children, and in critically ill neonates suggest that pretreatment with atropine limits or prevents bradycardia without inducing ventricular arrhythmias. Scenario two would be the use of atropine in infants and children with signs of septic shock or late stage hypovolemic shock. In these cases, the use of atropine may be beneficial because it may prevent unstable bradycardia by counteracting reflex bradycardia that can occur in a small subset of patients post-intubation. And finally, the last scenario to consider the use of atropine include those who are receiving succinylcholine for paralysis, specifically in infants and children 5 years of age or younger, or in children older than 5 years of age who are receiving a second dose of succinylcholine. That's because the use of succinylcholine has been associated with bradycardia and asystole in children. So according to the American Heart Association, you may consider the use of atropine in these cases to help counteract these effects. Also, atropine has a secondary benefit in that it dries secretions and may improve your field of vision during pediatric intubations. The typical dosing of atropine is 0.02 mg per kilogram per dose intravenously with a max single dose of 1 mg without a minimum dose. For a 12 kg male, you would provide a dose of 0.24 mg IV in the pretreatment phase of RSI. Keep in mind that although there is no minimum dose of atropine during RSI, doses of less than 0.1 mg have been associated with paradoxical bradycardia. There are few considerations, adverse reactions, and contraindications when using atropine during RSI. In addition to the contraindication of using any medication when there is a history of known hypersensitivity, most contraindications arise when atropine is not being used during emergent procedures, such as the avoidance of its use in patients predisposed to narrow-angle glaucoma, since it causes pupillary dilation and may increase eye pressure within the eye. Additionally, when not being used in resuscitation situations, atropine is contraindicated in patients with obstructive gastrointestinal or genitourinary conditions because it may exacerbate the underlying condition because of its anticholinergic effect on the parasympathetic nervous system. Common side effects of atropine also include tachyarrhythmias, nausea, visual changes, and hallucinations. Keep in mind that the effect of atropine on heart rate may persist for several hours and may prevent the bradycardic response to hypoxemia, so these patients should be closely monitored for hypoxia with pulse oximetry. Also, as mentioned previously, atropine dilates the pupils, although it does not eliminate pupillary constriction in response to light. This may complicate the ability to evaluate the change in neurologic status once the patient is paralyzed. Overall, atropine has been used less and less over the years, although there are still clinical situations where its use may be considered during RSI. For more on RSI pharmacology, check out some of our other videos with our link in the description below. After watching those, head over to our channel, subscribe, and be sure to click the notification bell to be informed when we release new content. In the meantime, you could show your support by liking this video, commenting below, and following us on social media.